guys, welcome back to Sport Rotten Beads. I am Juliet, and today I'm responding to a lot of requests we've had from you guys asking us to show you how to make beautiful beaded baubles, which is what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. These beaded baubles use kite beads and super duo beads, size 11 seed beads, and size 15 seed beads, and everything you need to make them can be found on our website www.spoiledrottenbeads.co.uk and if you're watching from anywhere outside of the United Kingdom don't worry we will ship to you all over the world so keep watching and I'll show you how to get started okay so I am going to show you how to get started and make one of these lovely beaded baubles here so you are going to need the following you're going to need a bauble, of course, and this is one that I picked up from Wilkinson's for a pound, and it measures 10 inches in circumference. So to make sure that you get the right size bauble, you need to take your tape measure and measure around the circumference of the bauble and make sure that that is 10 inches, and then it will fit the pattern that I'm about to show you. You will need some size 10 beading needles, some six pound fire line thread, and then you're gonna need your beads. You're going to need some size 15 Miyuki seed beads, size 11 Miyuki seed beads, some kite beads, some super duo beads, and some three millimeter fire polish beads. And like all of the items in all of our videos, you'll find those online on our shop, which is www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. So you'll find everything you need on our website there. So if you follow the link on this video, it'll take you straight to the right page. So I'm gonna show you how to get started. So I've taken the cover off my bauble so that you can see how it's made up here. And it's got these um, elements, these lovely snowflake elements. It's got four of them um, around the bauble. And um, so the first thing you need to do is to make four of these lovely elements here. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So I have threaded my needle up with around about a meter of fire line thread. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be working with my size 15 seed beads and my, and my super duos at the moment. And with all two hold beads, when you first use them, it's really worth checking them out and making sure that none of the holes are blocked. And if you do find a bead with a blocked hole, then just pop it aside and you might be able to ream it out later on. But there's nothing more frustrating than getting partway through your project and realizing that you have to unpick it because you've um, used a bead that um, doesn't have, um, well, that's got a blocked hole that doesn't have the two holes ready for you to use. So I'm going to start off by picking up a size 15 seed bead and then I'm going to pick up um, a total of six size 15 seed beads and a total of six of the super duo beads. So I'm just separating each of the super duo beads with a size 15 seed bead. And I'm gonna do this until I have got six of them here on my needle. There we go, I don't need that one. So there we are, have it. I have six size 15 seed beads and six of my um, lovely super duo beads. And I'm gonna take that down to the tail of my wire. Oh, my wire, my thread, it's not wire. There we go. And I am going to thread back through all of those beads again so that they sit around in a nice little neat loop. I'm just threading back all through all of those beads again. And you see as I pull tight now, it will pull round um, and form a little ring of beads there. And I'm going to take the tail of my thread and I'm going to knot that to the working thread like so just to bring that up into a nice neat loop like that. Um, and now to make sure it's really nice and secure I'm taking my tail and I'm going to knot it several times now to my working thread just to make sure that it's nice and secure and that knot will just slip in between two beads there and you won't see it. There we go. So now I start off with a little ring of super duos and size 15 seed beads. And now I'm going to take my working thread and I am going to step up through the empty hole in the super duo that I'm currently exiting. 
there we go so now my thread is exiting through the upper hole that empty hole in that super duo bead there and I'm ready to start adding my kite beads so I'm going to pick up a kite bead and I'm picking it up through the hole that is on the fat end of the kite bead and you can see what's going to happen here. It's just going to slot in between these two super duos and I'm going to thread through the empty hole in the next super duo in the pattern. And it will just sit like so in between the super duos. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do that in fact all the way around my piece here. This lovely magic rainbow colour that we've got of these kite beads is so pretty. Um, they're all different. I'm not really worrying about what colour I'm picking up each time um, because they are all different and they just tone so beautifully together. I do love these metallic beads. It's really rich for this time of year. There we go. And then I've just got my last kite bead to go on there. There you go, and you see it's already looking a little bit like a, a snowflake or a star there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread back through all of the beads in my loop one more time, just to add a little bit of strength to this piece here. So I'm just threading back through the super duos and the kite beads one more time. That will just add a little bit of strength there and um, make sure that our piece lasts the test of time. Really back to the beginning again now. There we are, one more to go through. Okay, I'm pulling this nice and tight, and there we are. Now I'm exiting through a kite bead here, and what I'm going to do is just like we did earlier, I'm going to step up through the empty hole in that kite bead that I, I'm exiting. So I'm now um, stepped up to the empty hole there. And what I'm gonna do now is pick up two of my size uh, 11 seed beads, a super duo, two more size 11 seed beads, and then go through the empty hole in the next kite bead in the pattern, like so. And I'm gonna continue that all the way around my piece. So I'm picking up two size 11 seed beads, a super duo and two more size 11 seed beads. And keep going all the way around. You guys are gonna have to show us all the colors that you do these in. I love seeing your designs that you do in the other colors. It's It looks so different. Um, each design looks so different when it's done in different colours and it's such fun seeing what you guys get up to with all of our lovely beads. So do share with us on our Facebook page and show us what you're up to. Here we go. We keep going round here, building this up now. You see these would make really cute little pendants or just Christmas decorations on their own actually, these stars. And this is the last one here. Through that last kite bead. And there you can see, there we go. Looking really pretty. So now I'm exiting from this kite bead here and what I'm gonna do is pick up a 15 uh, Super Duo and another 15 goes down and I am going to go through the empty hole on the next super duo in the pattern and it will look like that there and I'm going to now continue again all the way around my element here picking up a size 11 a super duo and a size 11 sorry not a size 11 a size 15 a super duo and a so, and uh, sorry, size 15, a super duo and a size 15. And then I'm gonna go back through that kite bead there. There we go. 
there we go and it will look like that now and i'm going to continue all the way around so it's a size 15 super duo size 15 through the empty hole in the next super duo in the pattern again i'm going to repeat that with a size 15 super duo size 15 and now it's through the kite bead only pull that tight and you can see how that's looking now so i'm going to go all the way around and i'm going to come right back to you when i've done that okay so i've gone all the way around here and i'm exiting from this kite bead here and what i'm going to do now is thread through the first size 15 and the first super duo that i get to and then switch direction by stitching up stepping up through the empty hole in this super duo right here so i'm going to do that right now and then i'm going to get my hands out of the way so that you can see what I've done there we go and I'm now stepping up through the empty hole in that super duo there so my I've changed direction around the circle now and my thread is now exiting the empty hole in this super duo here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up a size 11 seed bead a size 15 seed bead and another size 11 seed bead like so and then stitch through the empty hole in the next super duo in the pattern and now what i'm going to do is pick up two size 11 seed beads a three millimeter fire polish bead and two more size 11 seed beads and again i'm going to stitch through the empty hole in the next super duo in the pattern and pull that nice and tight and now I'm back to the super duos which are um, which have got the kite bead in between them so I'm going to do what I did here and I'm going to pick up a size 11 seed bead a size 15 seed bead and another size 11 seed bead and stitch through that empty hole in the next super duo in the pattern so I'm going to continue this now all the way around my element and then I'll be done so to make one of these lovely bauble covers you're going to need four of these elements so you need to make four of these um, to begin to be able to add them to your lovely bauble you can see they're looking so rich these colors are beautiful <clears throat> the um, size 11 seed bead I'm using is one of my favorites it is called cranberry gold luster it's really pretty. I'll just hold that so you can see there. That's cranberry gold luster. It's such a pretty colour. There we go. So I'm going to come back to you when I've done that. I'm just going to show you when I come back to you how I finish off my thread. Um, and then I'm going to make myself four more of these. And, and I'll show you how to begin to start netting your bauble. Okay, so I've gone all the way around my piece now. I've pulled everything nice and tight and I'm back to where I started from. And I just need to finish off my thread before I make myself four more of these elements. So I'm just gonna stitch through a few beads here and I'm gonna finish off my thread by stitching between two of my beads so that I get a little loop like this. Stitch through that loop with my needle and pull tight. And I'm gonna do that again in between the same beads. Pull that tight and then stitch into the next bead so that that pulls that knot inside those beads and i'm going to just do that a few times around the circle here so that it's nice and secure i like to do this three or four times before i snip off my excess thread here <clears throat> there we go stitch through that super duo pull that knot inside and stitch through a few more beads not with the camera there, sorry guys. Pull nice and tight. I'm going to stitch through some more beads and then this will be the last one before I snip off my excess thread here. There we go. Pull that inside some beads and I'm ready now to trim off my excess thread. So there is my first element. Um, I am going to trim off my excess thread here with my little scissors. And I'm going to do the same to my tailor thread that I left at the beginning there. 
And you see, there's my pretty little element. I'm gonna make myself four more of those, and then I'm gonna come back and show you how to start the netting for your bauble. Okay, so I've made all four of my different elements now, and I am ready to start making the netting to go around my bauble. So I'm gonna pop these to one side, and I've taken my needle and thread, and I've started off by threading on um, a row of size 11 seed beads and three millimeter fire polish beads. And what I've done is I started off with six size 11s, a, si a three mil fire polish bead and six more size 11s and repeated that until I've used a total of eight um, three mil fire polish beads and I've ended on a three mil fire polish bead. What I'm gonna do now is go through all of those beads um, one more time so that they um, sit up together in a in a ring so I'm going through all of those beads and you won't be able to do this all at once you'll just need to do it bit by bit just make sure you don't lose the beads off the end of your of your thread as you do so so I'm still threading through and I'm going to thread all the way back through until I get to the tail of thread that I've got here <clears throat> so there we go I'm just going working my way through those beads there just making sure that I don't put it too tight at the moment because I don't want to lose my tail of thread because I need to get back to that and then knot the working thread to that tail so that this loop stays tight together. Okay, a few more to go. There we are, I'm back where I started from now. So I'm back where I've started from now and I've got a nice loop of beads. Push, push this to one side and what I'm going to do is take my tail of thread and knot it to my working thread like so just to bring that loop together. I'm going to tie a nice double knot there. And one more time. There we go, and I've got a nice ring now of seed beads and three mil fire polish beads. What I'm gonna do now is thread inside the next three mil fire polish bead in the ring, like so. There we go. Just make sure my camera's focused there. There we go. And now what I'm gonna do is pick up five size 11 seed beads and then go back through that same three mil fire polish bead again and what you'll find is those three mil not those three mil the those size 11 beads will sit in a little loop around that size three mil fire polish bead there and then i can just keep going through um the size 11s and the three mil fire polish bead in the pattern and just repeat that again all the way around so I'm picking up five size 11 beads and then stitching back through that three mil fire polish bead that I just exited so that I end up like that with little rings of size 11 seed beads all around my three mil fire polish beads so I'm going to come right back to you when I have done that all the way around my circle there for all eight of my three mil fire polish beads. Okay, so I've gone all the way around my circle and I'm exiting from this three mil fire polish bead here. And this is the last fire polish bead that I just embellished. What I'm gonna do now is take my needle and thread and go back up through the first three size 11 seed beads that I get to on that um, fire polish bead so that my uh, my thread is exiting from the, the middle fire polish bead here, not fire polish bead, the middle size 11 bead here. And what I'm going to do now is pick up three more size 11 beads, a super duo and three more size 11 beads. And I'm going to stitch through the middle seed bead on that next set of five that I get to. And it will look like that. And I'm gonna, just going to continue around my circle now, doing that every time 
picking up three size 11 beads, a super duo and three more size 11 beads and then stitching through the next, the middle bead on the next set of five that I get to. So I'm going to continue around my circle and I'm going to come back to you when I have done that. When you're finished, it will look like that. And if you pull it all tight, what you'll find is everything will bunch up and pull it nice and tight and it will look like so. I feel like a nice little ring. And what that will mean is when you take your ball ball and you slip this over your top of your ball ball, it's going to sit really prettily around the cap on your ball ball with the Super Duro beads sticking out at the edges here ready for you to start your netting there. Um, so I've actually run out of thread here and my, my thread's got really really short so I am just going to go ahead and finish off this thread and um, add some more thread to my design and then I'm going to come right back to you and show you how to continue. So I'm going to come back to you when I have finished off this thread and when I've added some more thread onto my needle. Okay, so I've added some more thread on and I'm currently exiting from a super duro here and I'm going to step up through the empty hole in that super duro that I'm exiting from. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up four size 11 C beads, another super duo and four more size 11 beads and then go through the empty hole in the next super duro that I get to. And it will look like that there. And I'm going to continue now around my circle again, picking up four more size 11 C beads, a super duo, and four more size 11 C beads, going through the empty hole in the next super duo in the ring. And again, it will look like that. You can see that netting starting to build already. So I'm going to come back to you when I've gone all the way around my circle here. Okay, so I've gone all the way around my ring here and I'm exiting from this super duo here. I'm going to thread through the next four size 11 seed beads and also the next super duo in the pattern there. Pull that tight and then step up through the empty hole in that super duo. There we go. And now I'm going to add some more size 11 seed beads and also some kite beads. So I'm gonna pick up five of my size 11 seed beads, a kite bead, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm threading through the, the fat end of the kite bead, and then five more of my size 11 seed beads. And you know what I'm gonna do. I am going to go through the empty hole in the next super duo in the pattern. And it will look like that there. And again, I'm going to continue all the way around. So I'm picking up five of my size 11 C beads, a kite bead, and five more size 11 C beads. Drop that down and go through the empty hole in the next super duo. There you go. And I'm just going to continue around my piece here and come back to you when I've come all the way around again. Okay, so I've gone all the way around my circle and I finished up at this super duo here, threaded through the next five seed beads and the kite beads. So I'm popping out this kite bead here and I'm going to hop up, I'm going to step up by going through the empty hole in that kite bead. And now I'm ready for my next round of netting. And for this, I'm going to thread on five size 11 seed beads, three super duos and five more size 11 seed beads. Take that down and just like we've done before, go through the empty hole in the next kite bead in this case. Oh, I've just managed to get my thread caught around my scissors. Let me just untangle myself. There we go. Pull this nice and tight. And it doesn't really matter the which way your super duos are sitting at the moment because when you finish later on, they will sit in the correct way. But you're going to end up with a pattern that looks like this. So I'm going to continue all the way around my ring again. So I'm picking up my five size 11 C beads, my three super duo beads, 
and then five more size 11 seed beads. That's four, that's five, there we go. And I am gonna stitch through the empty hole in the next kite bead. And I'm gonna come back to you when I've gone all the way around my circle there. Okay, so I've gone all the way around again. You can see this is really starting to grow now. Um, I've finished up on this kite bead here and I'm gonna stitch through the next five size 11 seed beads, making sure I pull everything tight as I go. And now what I'm gonna do is from this five, one of these five size 11 seed beads, I'm gonna hop up through the empty hole in the next super duo that I get to. And now what I could do is take another super duo and add that between these two super duos there, like so, and pick up another super duo and again, add that between those two. I'm gonna keep getting my scissors caught. There we go, I'm done my scissors. There we go, and it will look like that. And then I'm gonna step down through the next five, of my seed beads. That beeping that you can hear in the background is our printer. Every time it does something, it has to beep and tell you. It's a bit annoying. Okay, there we go. And you can see what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna thread through these next five seed beads. And again, I'm gonna hop up into the empty hole on the next super duo in the ring. And I'm gonna add a super duo between these two. And again, here. And I'm just gonna continue around the ring like that, adding these extra super duos in. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and added in my extra super duos, and I'm now exiting from right here you can see from this lower super duo here. And what I need to do now is work my thread through the neck, through the next hole in that super duo, through this super duo middle super duo here, through the top hole in that middle super duo, and back through the bottom hole in the super duo I just added, because that will then allow me to step up through the empty hole in this super duo here. So I'm gonna do that right now and attempt to do that Keep my fingers out the way so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing as I go. And then, so I'm now exiting from the middle super duo. I'm going to go through the top hole in the middle super duo. And then through the bottom hole in the last super duo that I just added so that now I can step up through the empty hole in that super duo. Like so. There you go. Okay, so I'm exiting this super duo here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way back through these um, two super duos here and then back through the final super duo, duo that I just added so that I can hop up, step up through the empty hole in this super duo here. So I'm going to do that now, try and do that so that I can keep my fingers out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So that's through those two bottom super duos there. And then back through the middle super duo. And then back through the super duo that I just added. And now, of course, I can step up through the empty hole in that super duo. So I'm going to get rid of all my other beads because they're in the, kind of in the way there. There we go. So I'm now exiting from that top hole in the last super duo that I added. And what I can do now is pick up another super duo bead and pop it in between those last two beads like so and it creates this really pretty leaf shape and I'm now actually ready to start thinking about adding on one of my lovely 
beaded elements to my piece. So in order to do that, I need to get myself to the stage where I can come out of the empty hole in the super duo that I just added. So to do that, I'm gonna stitch down through these super duos here. through these two here and now you can see that I've got the space to be able to pop up through the empty hole of that super duo that I just added right there. Okay so now I'm ready to add my first little beaded element so I'm going to pick up two C beads, a three mil fire polish bead and two more C beads and then I am going to stitch through one of, and it doesn't matter which one, one of the three mil, the three mil fire polish beads on one of your elements. I don't know if you can hear the background noise here, but it's got really noisy all of a sudden. We live in, we're in a little village here at Spoil Rotten Beads, and it's normally nice and quiet, but um, today they've decided to cut the grass outside the shop and use a leaf blower, and then we've had sirens going. So I hope you can still hear what I'm saying. So I've gone through one of the three mil um, fire polish beads here, and I picked up two more size 11 C beads, and now I'm gonna stitch through the next three mil fire polish bead there that was the door going you can probably hear that as well um, and now i'm going to pick up two more of the size 11 c beads and go back through that last super duo bead and pull as tight and there you can see there is my beaded element now attached to my netting here and what I need to do now is to go around and put all four of my beaded elements on and we're going to be putting these on every other set of um, super duos so on this set of super duos here it's just going to end up with so that's the leaf blower now going again um, it's just going to end up with a super duo it's not going to end up with a beaded element but this one will so it's these um, beaded elements are going on every other one all around my piece so I'm just going to need to now sit here and stitch all the way through my beads come out into these this um, set of super duos add another super duo stitch through here add another super duo and a beaded element and just continue around my piece and then I'll be done and I'll be able to it on my bauble and show you how pretty it looks. Okay so I've finished my piece now and it's all ready to pop onto my bauble. This little bauble is full of lovely gold sparkly stars and as I said earlier I picked it up from Wilkinson's for just a pound um, and so to pop it pop your beaded piece on all you need to do is just thread it on top of your bauble and position it like so and I'll show you a better picture in a minute when it's on the tree. Um, but you see how neatly and snugly it fits around the top there. So you can see that top view. And then I'll show you a nice picture in a moment um, how pretty it looks when it's actually hanging on the tree. So these are my finished baubles hanging on this pretty silver tree here. I think you'll agree they look really pretty. One on the left, the pink one, I actually put an extra row of netting onto it. Um, and so you can see just how you can play around with this design really and have fun with it. But they look so pretty and there's a lot you can do with it. So do um, have a go yourselves and um, let us know how you get on and post some pictures of your makes on our Facebook page. And just remember you can find everything you need to make these lovely baubles on our website, www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. Okay guys, thanks for watching, bye.